Science is an amazing system of knowledge that improves our lives in countless ways. But it's not perfect. Science can be racist too. Why is that? Because it's done by humans and humans have biases. Some of these racial biases have root in scientific studies from the past. So let's take a look at the past in order to understand the present. How it all began was with the classification of human beings into categories. Before I get into some of the origins of these classifications, let's get one thing straight. Race is a societal construct. That means there's nothing biological or genetic about it. Race is only a thing because human beings enforce these boundaries socially. Wait a minute. Isn't race inherited, like when a mom has a baby that shares her ancestry? Well, yes. Parents and children do share a lot of their ancestry and 50% of each other's genes. But genetically, race isn't like families. That's because there's more genetic variation within a race than outside of it. That means that the genetic differences between races are pretty insignificant when you compare them to the genetic differences just between people in general. That's why race isn't genetic. It just doesn't fit into these neat biological categories like human beings seem to want it to. So let's get into the history. One of the earliest scientific attempts to classify humans into categories was the book Systema Naturae by Carl Linnaeus. Carl Linnaeus was an excellent scientist who contributed significantly to our knowledge of modern taxonomy, or the classification of living things into categories. But unfortunately, his work also contributed to stereotypes about human beings today. He created four categories for humans that I put up on the slide, and you can kind of see that some of these thoughts he had about human beings persist today. The problem was that these classifications weren't scientific at all, but they still stay with us. Later on, Samuel George Morton published Crania Americana. It was a catalog of human skulls and jump-started the field of craniology. Morton took measurements of the cranial volume of these human skulls and concluded that human beings with larger craniums had higher intelligence, while human beings with smaller cranial volume had lower intelligence. He then decided that Europeans had the largest cranial volume and the highest intelligence, while Africans had the lowest cranial volume and the lowest intelligence. This book was used to justify slavery. <laughs> Of course we know now that head size has nothing to do with intelligence, and it's not correlated to race at all. But that knowledge doesn't stop some of the persistent negative stereotypes about African Americans that still exist today. These two books set the scene for all the acts of scientific racism that were to follow. It made it easy to justify doing things like experimenting on slaves or other races of people because you had scientific proof that you were better than them. And that's exactly what happened next in history. James Marion Sims, who most consider the father of American gynecology, used slave women for most of his experiments. Even after slavery, things like the Tuskegee experiment happened, where in 1932 in Tuskegee, Alabama, many poor and black subjects were denied treatment for their syphilis in order to see what would happen to their bodies. So there is a legacy of scientific racism. But stuff like this still happens to this day in science. In 2011, Satoshi Kanazawa, an evolutionary psychologist, published an article in Psychology Today saying that black women were objectively less attractive. <laughs> and an example from just last year is when New York Times science writer Nicholas Wade put out a book saying that there were links between genetics, behavior, and race. Over 140 geneticists wrote into the New York Times to say that Nicholas Wade misrepresented their work in the book. So when you hear or read about one of these studies, 
Make sure you remember that we're getting better, but we're still not perfect. Don't just question the science, but question the potential biases involved, from how the data was collected to the way it's interpreted. Stay critical, because if no one speaks up about these issues, they're going to continue. This new video series is called Science with Moxie. I'll have new videos every month on Fridays, so if you want to stay in touch, please rate, comment, and subscribe.